We all have a beginning. A moment that changes us, shapes us into who we are. For some, it is a quiet turn, planned, ushered in with precision. For others, it is a sharper twist of fate, leaving scars that never heal. For most, these moments are endured, accepted, even forgotten, while there are those who struggle to forgive, to forget. And there are some, just a few, who pass through the fire, wanting more. I know my beginning. I know where it will take me. It will fall to me, dark, the mightiest of mages, to face my demons and save Eliwold. I summon you, fiend of the lower world. Rise and face your bane. Dark, wake up! You can daydream after your initiation. The masters are waiting for you in the hallowed hall. The door is ajar. Bort has set the combination dial to Shadow Earth Shadow. It's a good thing I found you, Dark. It's not like I can check the records hall, and my finder amulet doesn't work anymore. It appears to be an incantation for growing a pinecone out of your head. This was fashionable in Dominatra about five years ago. Bort has placed a protective aura over everything readable. I cannot take a single page without permission. Nervous? You should be. Just don't be late like I was, unless you want to repeat a whole year. Good luck! I don't know the combination. Water, air, earth. I need to enter a combination for the hall I want to visit. Then press the gem in the center. Welcome, Initiate. You have trained long and hard under our roof. Your element has chosen you well. Already, your time as a novice is drawing to a close. Soon you will demonstrate mastery over your power. The time has come to claim your element. Before you begin, you must affirm that which has chosen you. Thoughts reflect your nature and your element alike. Respond carefully. You see an old woman lost in the market quarter. She appears confused and begs you to help her. A fight breaks out in the local tavern. The barkeep looks to you for help. The giftless, or non-mages are... What is magic for? In your responses, you have demonstrated an affinity with the flame. Do you agree with this assessment, Initiate? You have affirmed your commitment to the fire. The spark within you ignites memories of my own youth. You may request your first gifts from the Sphere of Knowledge. 
To earn the title of your kindred, you must fulfill three tasks. Your first awaits across the lake, upon Lone Island. There you will find a banished priestess, her beauty rivaled only by her cunning and treachery. Take but a lock of her hair. Your second lies within the valley of our closest mountains, where our winged guardians keep watch over the town. Most prized are their griffin's eggs. Return with one. The forest conceals your final task. Many beings and beasts dwell there, most with laws of their own. Bring back the horn of a trinacorn. A warning. The townspeople are tolerant of our magic, yet care little for it. Pass by them as the gentlest breeze, and leave them to their small affairs. Go now, focus on your tasks. You have until the new day dawns. Farewell, young novice. May your deeds ensure you a place in the memory of others. Elements guide you. Ready for your tasks? I wrote them down for you, just in case. Do not ask me how I know them. There is a reason I enjoy this job. Just try not to incinerate it. By the way, don't forget to acquire your first spells from the Sphere of Knowledge in the Training Hall. The combination is Fire, Light, Light. I have waited ten years for this. Seeker of power, know your element. Say not, but show. Of what do I speak? Cold, black, hard and heavy. Make sooty all faces and hands. Come winter's night, it glows like ember. A diamond in waiting. I know, it's... Show. I have to find what it is asking for. Something to do with my element, I suspect. I should search the training hall. Make sooty all faces and hands. Come winter's night, it glows like ember. A diamond in waiting. I have to find what it is asking for. Something to do with my... Receive your power. Yes! The Sphere has judged you worthy, I take it. Excellent. You are progressing well. Few have worked as hard to hone their mind and temper their aggression. You will make a fine Fire Mage. One I am already proud of. Thanks to you. Ah, <laughs> but that is my duty, no? To ensure each student of Fire's learning potential is met. A far cry from this training hall's intended purpose. When our warriors outnumbered the scholars. No matter. I have trained you well enough to survive your tests, at least. Do you know what you are seeking yet? A lock of the priestess's hair, a griffin's egg, and a trinicorn's horn. <laughs> One might think we were training thieves. Good luck in your tasks. Feel free to consult with me if you wish, and do not forget. 
The world beyond these walls is treacherous. Trust no one. Now, to business. Your trials mark your competence to carry a conductor. Take this. Bear it well. It will channel your element's gifts, allowing you to perform less passive magic. It's handy in a fight, you mean? More like essential. Listen carefully, Doc. The conductor is to be used strictly for defense. And under no circumstances are you to inflict harm upon the giftless humans within the town's walls. This law transcends all others, and has done so since the Orkstein Wars. Now that you have received the first of your spells, I suggest you familiarize yourself with your new abilities. Your raw skills are another matter. As you gain knowledge and experience, ensure to invest them wisely. That way you will improve the attributes best suited to your nature. In this lies the key to unlocking your greater potential. Consider how your recent experience might best benefit you. Decide which areas you wish to improve in. The conductor alone is a powerful weapon, but it can be made more so. As you venture beyond the safety of the tower, you may chance upon the odd gemstone. These are known to contain particular properties for those who can assess and harness them. When set into your conductor, you will find your abilities enhanced. Only two may be embedded at any one time. I have been keeping one such gem for you. Consider it an early initiation gift. I confess the power contained within that gem has waned over time. It will not take you long to locate a better one. For now, though, it will suffice. Set it in to one of your conductor slots. Well done. I shall teach you about your newly acquired combat spells. A challenger for Dark! You can save time by falling down right now. Okay, Dark. Let us start at the beginning. While Flame Bolt may be your first spell, think of it as your last line of defense. It uses little mana but packs a powerful punch once mastered. Go ahead and cast it at your opponent. Ugh. Very good. Even when magically exhausted, you may still summon enough energy to deter your attackers. Aside from being less effective, it's best if you do not let it come to that. Your accuracy may suffer in the beginning. Apply your intelligence at any given opportunity to improve your prowess. The Circle of Cinders spell is good for keeping encroaching enemies at bay for a short time. Cast it on yourself now. Excellent! It will also damage any foe who walks into its fiery ring. Now that we have covered everything, would you like a one-on-one -on -one practice session? Not enough, not enough. Not a- Well done, Dark. Try harder next time, Tyler. Now you are prepared. 
for leaving the tower, at least. Should you yearn for further knowledge, seek the Mixing Martial with Magical Compendium in our reading hall. That's the spirit. Newly initiated water mage at your service. It is a shame your element picked you first. Next life, perhaps. I have had the opportunity to speak with her on several occasions. She sees in me great potential. Just my luck having to deal with that earth mage whenever I want to look something up. Anyone so interested in paper and trees must be conflicted or confused. Did you get the priestess too? She is a popular task, especially among the male initiates. I'm sure most don't see her that way. Are you sure you're 16? My task was to catch her echo. Sounds tricky, but as with many things, it comes down to having the right bucket handy. Do you know the combination to the fountain hall? Have you not sailed the three seas? Tell you what, Dark, I'll trade you that information for a healing potion. But... Otherwise, I hope you enjoy guesswork. The three C's. Hmm. I thought you might come this way. Initiates enjoy partaking of the fountain before setting out on their tasks. Calms the nerves. Come, drink. Works wonders, doesn't it? I remember when you were first brought here. What was it, ten years ago? I had not long been initiated myself. Well, perhaps it was a little longer. Never mind that. I wondered then how your mother could give up such a beautiful child to strangers whose ways she could not know. Oh, but I do not mean to dredge up... Dark. Sometimes I glimpse the dreams of those closest to me. Often they make little sense, but yours of late have been clear. I dream of demons, whatever they mean. You dream of greatness, the mightiest of mages. Is that a bad thing? If one's motives are pure, no. But few achieve so delicate a balance, and fewer still maintain it. What are you saying? Let the trials you face reflect your true nature. The lessons you learn will serve you, perhaps even save you. Good luck, Dark. I take it you want to cross Lorelei Lake? I have a compass that will allow you to navigate your way to the island. Thank you. Not so fast. Ugh. What do you want, Cray? Money? Don't be ridiculous. I left something in the priestess's palace when I was there. I want you to get it back for me. You mean the priestess took it from you? I'm going to ignore that. The important thing is the item itself. A sapphire brooch encrusted with four smaller stones. It was a gift from someone who has since left Iganor. A girl? That is my business. Now, as you know, we are not permitted on the island unless it is part of our initiation. Promise to retrieve it for me, and I will give you the compass. All right. Deal. Good. Here you go. Oh, and you will also need this. A scrap of paper? What is this? A riddle of some kind? That is for you to work out. I've held up my end. Make sure you do the same. I would hate to see you disadvantaged for breaking your word. What is that supposed to mean? Let us hope you don't find out.
The water refuses to enter the flask. The fountain requires a donation of precious metal. Ten gold coins. You will need an empty flask to contain the water. There, I filled my flask with mage's water. I can't believe I've lived in the tower for 10 years and this is the first time I get to explore the region. I should aim closer to the knot. Hey, Thand, we've got a new boy in town. I can see that, Bug. You'll have to excuse my friend. The name's Fend. Dark. He's a mage. I can see that, Pug. Where are you from? Stew Pond, originally. Bit of a sinkhole, I hear. I don't remember. Trust me, you're not missing much. We haven't been here long ourselves. We like to keep moving. We don't want anyone catching up. Shut up, Pug. I'll say one thing for your hometown, mage. At least it's too small to have its own lord. Fend has a problem with the Thor. Listen, Doc. May I call you that? Why don't we get better acquainted? Is this your first time in the tavern? Uh, yeah. Excellent. Then you'd best follow the locals' tradition. New boys by the rounds. What'll you have? What have you got? Ale. Is that it? Well, there's the special that the rough-looking fellow over there's having, but it would probably kill a child like you. The man near the open window? Yeah, keep your wits around him. Is he trouble? Who knows? Rumor has it he's off the wastelands, or used to be. So he'd know his way around there? Probably, but only the town full would ask. There are safer ways to order a drink. What are And so, to cover the necessary costs of maintaining my manor, the price of ale will be increased by 15%. Secondly, the appointment of a new town sheriff following the recent passing of the late law keeper Kristen is expected within the month. In the meantime, any criminals, however trivial their indiscretions, will answer personally to my gods and shall receive the full hospitality of the Lord's basement. Thirdly, let it be known that there is to be a new tax called the King's Tribute. This will help curry favor with his majesty so that he may look with a generous eye toward Igonor's most humble lord. And its community. Finally, anyone caught in my private gardens will receive a fine of no less than 5% of their seasonal profits. This concludes the announcements. I bid you, the working class, good day. Why? Why? Why do I want it? And that 
is how we defeated the giant squid. How did you travel between the islands without boats? We islanders are expert raft builders. There are no equals. I'll take your word for it. You spoke of raft building. What does that involve, exactly? A good raft is made from four well-fastened even wooden planks, enough to hold your weight. Tying a couple of airtight containers beneath will improve your buoyancy. Finally, you need a means of maneuvering yourself. It's not my job to clear them. Let me guess. You want to read up on your first task? What do you need to know? Something about the lake. I know just the thing. You should be able to find it now. Only you would know a book-finding spell. I have heard a lot about her. No idea if the anecdotes are true. You'll have to find out for yourself. After all those centuries, she might welcome a haircut. By all accounts, she got off lightly. Ah, yes. Varner loves that one. You should be able to locate it on the shelf. Iganor's tower is... unique. At least for three days' walk in any northerly direction. Then you'll find another exactly like it. There are an untold number of halls within this tower, which is what comes from making the best use of the same space. We can be a fickle bunch at times, I grant you, but I believe every mage has Eliwald's best interests at heart. Who wouldn't want to be a master? With just four seats per tower, it remains an unrealized goal for most. To reach that level requires the highest discipline, with the exception of the high masters of Dominatra. In some ways, the first is often the most difficult. You are just finding your feet, and only beginning to understand your power. I did not have the opportunity to encounter her, as it were. From what I have been told, do not be deceived by her appearance. Her experience in testing initiates has made her all the more cunning. That's the spirit.
expect from this neither the easiest nor fairest of tests. By the way, Dark, if you have not yet visited the Observation Hall, you should do so. How do I access it? Try Light Air Air. Jonas? Jonas! Hmm. Ah, you startled me. I was making a precise calculation of... Uh, uh, well, I knew what it was a moment ago. I suppose you were off to take your test now, hmm? I remember my initiation, I think. It had to do with toads. Or was it frogs? Something messy anyway. They always are these things. The fun begins! May I use your telescope? Of course! What do you want to see? Lone Island. All right. All set. I see the palace on Lone Island. Is there something wrong with your telescope, Jonas? The palace on Lone Island keeps appearing and disappearing. Have you tried not blinking? I'm being serious. How awful. Oh, I know. It's some kind of water magic or other. Those bubbly blues do love their illusions. My telescope, poor thing, is trying to counter it. So if I go there, I won't be able to see it? Exactly. See what? Oh, <sighs> never mind. The f- Keep your head in the clouds. Illusions? Of course. I am sure there's a book in the reading hall if you are keen. Transparent fluidity, if I recall. I know that book. You can find it now. I don't suppose you can talk. I don't suppose you can think. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry. I'm not giving you my sap. It's all I have. It's important, and I only need a little. You say that now, but you'll come back for more. They always do. Who are they? Have others been taking your sap? Not my sap. My bark. My branches. Even my fruit. Pieces of me. Taken bit by bit. They do not even ask. Do they think trees feel no pain? I've always assumed as much. Mm. Try being enchanted. It's not as much fun as it sounds. How did you come to be enchanted? Long ago, a mage came, dressed like you. His bark, yeah, clothes, were green and shinier than yours. An earth master. Go on. He wanted to give me voice and thought, so he might share his mind with nature itself. He is the one who named me. What happened? He died, leaving me to go on, endangered and alone. 
Perhaps I can find the pieces that were taken from you. I do not care about the bark or the branches. The fruit, though, I will not bear another again. And I cannot propagate without my seeds. Who took the fruit from you? The human villain did not give me its name. I think it was female. You think? Humans all look alike. I'll see what I can do. There's no The Goblin Looks like I overdid it. The fruit is scorched to the core. There's no, there's no, the gob, The God. For fire ants, they had a low tolerance to heat. 
I'm just glad the bush didn't catch a light. I'll just take the dry one. The board is nailed firmly to the wooden frame. I'll need some sort of metal pole to pry it loose. I think I saw one in the training hall. Fresh apples! Plucked for your convenience, and priced accordingly! I understand you may have some rare fruit for sale. Rare, yes. For sale, no. Might I interest you in a trade? That depends. There is another fruit I wanted to get my hands on. It's called Apple Bliss. One alone would fetch double the price of a dozen Screaming Tree Fruit. Except, they only grow in a clearing along the leftmost edge of the forest. Naturally. Bring me one, and you have a deal. I can see you're not much of a cook. Burnt fruit is of no use to me. If it isn't nailed down... Best me cuts for sale. This side of the Herald and Sea. The fruit seller, Ceres, keeps a keen eye out for potential buyers. There's no... The golden fruit is enticing. It's a little out of my reach. I can't use that item there.
the goblin. I see there's no Fresh bread! Get it while it's hot out of the bake oven! Bring me an apple bliss from the left. I have your apple bliss. I'm impressed. As promised, here's the fruit from the screaming tree. I shouldn't have bothered, to be honest. They taste a little sour. They're probably homesick. What? Nothing. Thank you. Better keep them to myself. Do you have an eye for nature's offerings? I'm in need of more brown mushrooms. Bring me some and I'll compensate you. Thank you. Here's your reward of two gold coins. Since I left the islands, my home, I've missed the taste of exotic fish. I hear there are creatures of the sea that can wander the land. Bring me the flesh of the Cassie Puss, and I shall reward you as best I can. Do you mind eight-legged arachnids? The spiderling's glands secrete a venom that is ideal for creating antidotes. I shall pay for any amount you can obtain.
Working hard, black. <sighs> Sweat from labor's brow. Ugh. My seeds! Yes. Now, your sap? Take as much as you need. There. I've added one drop of sap. I'll save the rest. I've added two drops of sweat. Ew. I have added three drops of a potent beverage. Blacksmith, have you any errands for me? <clears throat> I can now build a raft, but I'll need the town blacksmith's help to fasten these planks together before I can bind anything with the rope. Could you nail these four planks together? <clears throat> if it's a matter of money... <clears throat> Is that enough? <clears throat> I think he wants more coin. Is that enough? <clears throat> Thank you, blacksmith. I don't need to take it with me. I will need more than one keg. I will need... The airtight kegs have been securely fastened to the raft with the rope I found. That should do it.
nothing. It's an illusion, just like Jonas said. There is some writing on it. It's nice to see the Masters hold their initiates in such high regard. There's no loot. It doesn't. There's no... What little it has left. There's no. What? There's... There's no... I don't mean... What is this? A man? No, not quite. 
Another child enters my domain, seeking to earn his place. To what do I owe the pleasure, Initiate? Have you come to pay homage to the priestess Amankul? To honor the once and great ruler of Armanash? Do you seek to look upon beauty so immeasurable that men and women once gave their lives for a single glimpse? No? Perhaps you have a gift, a tribute befitting one of my glory and stature. I thought not. A message from your masters, then? Will you inform me I have concluded my sentence? Am I to be freed at last? But I jest. Your kin are not the forgiving kind. Not even after 500 years. I know why you are here. To take, as those who have come before you have taken. Already I tire of your presence. State what you want of me, child. I have come to ask for a lock of your hair. A lock of my hair? Were I to give it willingly, you would find it no easy task. The curse which has kept me so long, unchanged, prevents even a single strand from leaving my head. A pity the same could not be said of my followers. You will need a special blade, a dagger. It is kept in my treasury. Bring it to me. You must think me a fool if you believe I'd hand you something like that. A fool you may be, but I know what you want, young one. It is not so rare a glint I see in your eyes. That blade can help you, for it contains power, far greater than your masters would let a novice wield. In exchange for your assistance, I will allow you to keep it. It is but a small request, but what say you? Will you bring me the dagger? Surely a worthy weapon for the mightiest of mages. How did you- <laughs> Make your choice, my pretty child. My jewels. My breath. Now my hair. What next? It was forged from a rare enchanted metal, and dipped in the blood of a wyvern's heart. You will not be disappointed when you learn of its properties. It will respond only to one untainted by the bloodlust which forged it. As such, its full potential remains unwielded. Be wary, young one. It was not meant for just anyone to enter. Nor does it take kindly to the liberation of its holdings. Eager to leave? I can imagine. It feels like something They must have thought they were backing a winner. The name etched in the stone says Bernardo. The name etched in the stone says Honorary. The name etched in the stone says Russell. The name etched in the stone says Christy. The name etched in the stone says Katie. This niche is empty and the stone beneath is blank. Strange. Uh-oh, I suppose I should have expected that. Impressive. I wonder if the Masters know about this collection.
Hmm, that... I should try... Maybe there's an... Okay, that's weird. Is the priestess toying with me? The chest isn't locked. But of course, it's empty. There is a sapphire brooch inside, encrusted with four smaller stones. Got it. There's a short length of metal inside. It seems to be a piece of something. Eager to... You are most resourceful. I have one last task for you. Only the purity of Lake Lurelei will reawaken the magic of this blade. It must be dipped by my hand, else the dagger cannot resist the curse of my imprisonment. Bring me water from the lake, and you shall have what you came for. I can't use that. I can't. I. I shouldn't leave. Ah. Ugh, that didn't taste great. Ah. I have the water. Finally. I didn't think I was gone that long. Can you imagine? For centuries surrounded by the means, without the means to attain it. My jailers have a sense of humor at least, but they sent initiates, one after the other. Hundreds must have stepped through those doors, each with their trinkets. Piece by piece, drop by drop, I acquired enough to fashion this blade. You created the dagger? Why? It does not matter. With its magic restored, I am now ready. I only require a small lock of hair. A lock? Silly boy, I will not waste the blade's power on a trim. Then what?
You must forgive the deception. What do you think of your new home? Why so sad? Does the child miss his mother? She does not remember you. As for your father... Don't talk about my family! What is this? Motivation. I have had lifetimes to divine the conditions of this cage. For an eternity and more, I thought this my endless prison. Yet no cage is inescapable. It may have taken longer than the world needed to forget me, but I have discovered its weakness. The generosity of others. You, my almost mage, are going to free me. What? Simply agree to take my place, and my time here is ended. Before you answer, consider. I can teach you much. More than any of your brethren are willing or able. You dream of becoming the mightiest of mages. I have seen that future, and can help you achieve it. You need only say yes. A small price, you must agree. Why the dagger, then? A mere formality. A ritual. Nothing you won't forget in a few centuries. You can forget it now! I won't help you! Do not be so hasty. You will not find the alternative pleasant. I will leave you here to reconsider. I have learned patience, among other things. When you have made your decision, you need only scream for me. Five hundred years. Who could live like that? Unchanging? Eternal? Decaying within? I can smell time's waste in this dungeon. It's sick with entropy. Even the... walls. The cracks in the metal shackle have given way. Now for the other shackle. There is very little. This device has come loose from its wall fixtures. The old lock fell to bits. Sneaking into a woman's bedchamber? Such impudence! Etiquette doesn't apply to people like you. People like me? In 500 years, there have been none! You stand before an ocean storm, child. My will is but its waves. All I see is a failed mage, drowning in her own irrelevance. Strong words spoken by those whose heads now line my walls. So choose your next carefully. I offer you immortality and power. Tell me your answer. Why? Are you going deaf in your old age? As you wish. I need only wait for the next initiate. Whereas you, pupil, are due for your lesson. Not enough mana. They both collapsed at the same time. Interesting. The crab is lifeless. This isn't something I wish to open in a hurry. Who knows what the priestess considers decorative.
I wonder who, or what, Amon Kool was intending to summon to the palace. She's not in the mood to talk, for a change. I can't use... Finally, I have a lock of her hair. Wait, don't kill me. I can still help you. Show you the path you seek to power. I'm listening. There is a tome, not in any library, but in the hands of one who does not understand its power. You are fated to find both. Assuming you're right, what then? Seek the tome, then I shall instruct you further. She has fallen unconscious. Is this more guile? Should I believe her? It is done. I had better return to the Hallowed Hall. You have returned, Initiate Dark. Your efforts thus far have proven your value to this tower. We accept the lock of hair as proof of your accomplishment. Do not grow complacent. The most challenging tasks lie ahead. The priestess, Amankul, is dead. In time, her long life, her very name, will fade from even the most studious of minds. The taking of life is never relished, nor do we celebrate it. Your actions in this matter, intended or not, may ripple in ways not even I can foresee. While your decision was not born of the light, take heart from knowing that Amun Kul's terrible lust for tyranny has ended. Rest now, then turn your mind to the mountains, where you will need wits as sharp as the eyes that keep watch from there. Not yet. You! You're one of them! From that tower! Most astute. What do you want? A word, and your cooperation. I can make it worth your while. Keep talking. I think it's time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge.
Word is getting around that you vanquished the priestess in battle. Well done. Do you sense it? What? Something not quite with us. Should I pretend that makes sense? Waiting at the crossroads, knowing the decision to come. Time is against... Ah! Varner! Are you all right? <sighs> Forgive me. It never gets easier, this trait of the Fire Mage. I hope you'll master it better than I. Seeker of power, employ your element. Find the key in a place opposed. Unlock what is yours. Dark. You didn't tell me she was a water mage. A dark water mage. There is a difference. What of the priestess? She's... uh... Are you alright? I think so. I'm not sure. You did what you had to do. Yeah, I guess. Now that I have the key, what is it supposed to unlock? I have been trying to open this chest since I arrived 10 years ago. Could it be that this key... There's a scroll inside the chest. Do these runes pertain to my next spells? I'd love to know who created that sphere. I'd sock him one. The berries have been crushed into a fine powder. Receive your power. Ready for some one-to-one? -one? A challenger! Firebomb is a most useful spell for dealing high damage. Go ahead, cast it at your opponent. Don't worry, no real harm will come to him within these walls. Good! Remember, this spell can injure you too, so exercise caution. Combustion can be used to set an opponent aflame. Why not try it out on Tyler? Magnificent! The more powerful your combustion spell, the longer the flames will dance upon your foe. Now that we have come... Not enough mana! Well done, Tyler. As for you, Dark, you'll have to do better than that if you ever hope to become a fully-fledged mage. Dark, you survived the palace. You don't have to sound so surprised. Sorry. Ready to read up on your second task? What do you need to know? Something about the mountains. I know just the thing.
You should be able to find it now. You took care of the priestess, I see. You saw? I watched everything. I'm not sure whether I should feel grateful or disturbed. Why not both? Without a doubt, the best of the three. All those feathers. Be sure it doesn't hatch or you will be a mother before your time. Don't you mean father? Don't confuse the child. Proud and regal creatures, like those who have pledged to protect them. You will never find more diligent parents. I have made numerous visits to the Flytarian Valley over the years, though the last time I was disallowed entry, maybe it was something I said? My third favorite species. I had thought of shifting the observation hall view to one of the peaks, but then I wouldn't be able to see them anymore. May I use your telescope? Of course! What do you want to see? The mountain. All right. All set. There is a winged guard at the entrance to Flyteria. Keep your head in the clouds. Your brooch, I believe? I'm impressed. I almost expected you to hold on to it. Or sell it. I keep my word, Cray. So it would seem. Did you have fun with the priestess? Fun might be too strong a word. But I won't forget the experience in a hurry. No doubt. Enjoy the rest of your trials. Are... are you? I am... was... I don't remember. You're dead! Yes. Sorry. You're my first ghost. Why am I here? I have no idea. I haven't spent a lot of time in the philosophy hall. I belong... elsewhere. The wastelands. Find the camp. Find my peace. The traitors. I'll do my best. It's the unspoken mandate of the Fire Mage to help spirits in distress. Thank you. I've heard the bandits have a camp in the wasteland somewhere, and they've been known to trade illegally, or at least beyond the Lord's ability to tax them. It could well be the same one. Maybe there's someone around here who has knowledge of the wastelands, and who could direct me. Have you a cut, burn, or abrasion? Bandage it up, so others need not look at your wound. This I sell, and more.
Please accept eight gold coins for your effort. Will you meet him, Finn? Shh! Not so loud, but will you? I'll consider it. What's it to you? I hear you know it well. Who told you that? Uh, people? <laughs> Sounds like you don't care much for people. What do you mean? Go on. Keep talking. If my throat weren't so dry, I'd tell you what happens to kids who ask too many questions. Makes a good special. I came here not to be bothered. Mine. You got a problem. Go on. What'll you have? Mm, sorry, lad, but you're... Drink son the young'un! Ah, that hits the spot. Again. Not too flaky, is he, Pug? Reckon he could handle himself in a friendly wager? If he has the coin. What do you say, friend? A simple game of chance? Come over here. I'll teach you a sure way to make some easy money. For us? Shut up. I know what you're doing. You're wasting your time. So... another one then? You bet. What'll you have? You've had... But... Don't make me say it again. You think you're getting somewhere with this? Well, come on. Where's the next one? What'll you have? You've had a... But... Don't... Ah, refreshing. Mm, sorry, lad. You... But... Don't... Go on. First rule of the tavern, never take another man's drink. But you could take his. Shut up, pug. That is, unless you intend to pay. Watch your back out there. How much is my mug of ale worth to you, maid? You're getting warmer. You're getting, you're getting, you're getting. The ale is yours, take it. Half a mug's worth nothing, kid. It doesn't. This is my birthday drink. It's your birthday today? Of course. Isn't it, Finn? Sure, why not? Anyway, I can't give you my birthday present unless... Hey, you're a mage, right? Uh, yeah? Show up, isn't he? I'll trade you if you show me some magic. I hope the tower doesn't find out about this. Cut that out! Sorry. That was great! I'm impressed. It doesn't take much. Here, have my ale. These two items do... These... Half a... Half 
a mug. What'll you? You now? Watch your back. A popular game in the capital, so I am told. And a fair and honest one to boot. That's not what you said la- Shut up, pug. Shall we play? To start the game, we must both put two gold coins into the pool. Excellent. Now, the rules. There are 62 cards in a deck. Each card has a value from one to six. The player with the highest collective value of the four cards drawn wins. After the first card, you'll need to match or raise the current bet to see the second and third cards. The fourth card will be played blind. You may fold at any time, but the money pulled will be awarded to the other player. A demon card has a value of zero, but doubles your highest card drawn. Go ahead, draw your first card. I bet five gold coins. I bet five gold coins. I bet five gold coins. I fold. Well done. Here is your win. Let me know if you want another round. It might be easier to move the table. I'd have better luck rousing a narcoleptic numbat. In addendum to the previous decrees of the day, it is hereby unlawful to be wearing the same colors as your most generous and compassionate lordship. A fashion faux pas tax will be levied upon the offending party, the resulting proceeds of which will be used to expand further the necessarily diverse range of your lord's garments. Again, I bid you good day. The heat spell would likely destroy the hive. The tingleberry powder may make them docile, but I can't just throw it up there. How can I help? Those formations are the most fascinating thing about the whole valley. They build their homes in the trees, which I can appreciate on some level. But why so far from the ground? I imagine they're an effective deterrent. You have to admire a people who preserve nature the way they have. Be careful that it doesn't hatch. I heard that griffins form strong attachments to their parents. There's a book, Bestiary Volume 7, which describes griffins as Majestic as they are territorial, best viewed from a distance. You should probably heed its advice. That is one for Jonas, I think. Ah! Without a doubt, the best of the three. Irritable creatures, their stings can leave a nasty rash, assuming they don't kill you outright. 
Don't get too close. Is there a way to pacify them? Have you tried singing to them? No, and I'm not going to. Oh, what about putting them to sleep then? That should calm them down. Really? Works for humans, doesn't it? I have heard that the fruit of a certain plant has an intoxicating effect on insects. You can barely keep them away. <laughs> or awake. Which plant? No idea. They're not really my thing. Without my third. Not that talkative, but who wants a chatty guard? Keep your head in the clouds. I should see if Vort has any insight to offer about this intoxicating plant. I know the plant Jonas was referring to. There's a tingleberry bush growing in the woodland just outside of town. The berries, when dried and crushed, release an intoxicating aroma. Heating the powder in an incense burner will increase its potency. This should be quite effective against the wasps. Where am I supposed to find an incense burner? Seems like the sort of knick-knack the giftless would take an interest in. Are you sure this will work? I saw ants swarming all over the tingleberries. They weren't affected. Technically, ingesting enough should knock any creature out cold. Insects, however, aren't known for their large appetites. Besides, have you ever tried force-feeding a wasp? Point taken. You'll have to smoke them out. I noticed you have an incense burner. Is it for sale? Uh, that depends. It is of immense sentimental value. How much? If you were prepared to risk your life for me, we might be able to come to a deal. If not? You would find the deal less palatable. I'm listening. When I first arrived, traveling through the northern wastelands, I was accosted by bandits. Fortunately, I managed to conceal my most valuable belongings. If you were to retrieve them... Where are they, exactly? Ah, the mind and the eye seldom agree. You don't remember? I recall a deep ravine, a lifeless shrub, and the brittle remains of a beast and its master. My belongings lie in the vicinity of those. Here, this map may aid you. I'll see what I can do. Should you have any bones to spare, I could use them to make charms. For luck, you understand. You would have my gratitude. As undying as the walking dead that comprised them. As well as a humble payment. These two are... Want to know the location of the bandit camp fine like i'm ever going back there listen from the wastelands entrance head west until you can travel no further walk north until the ground is split by twin chasms then go east a short way the place is hidden in plain sight
It looks like a normal map of the wastelands. There's This looks like the area Sea Long described. True to his word, Si Long's valuables are stashed here. Not enough mana! Not enough- Not enough me not enough
I'm not carrying any venom. Not enough, not. Not enough. Not enough mana! Not enough. Not enough. Not enough men. Not enough. Not. Not. A This steel strongbox appears to be of foreign design. I'll need to do something about that lock first. I cannot break it. That spell doesn't generate enough heat to melt the metal lock. I can't use that item there. A blade won't... The venom really took a... Not enough man.
there's a journal tucked into his clothing. He's also carrying a small key. The lock has been dealt with now. These stones remind me of the ones Si Long sells. I wonder if he'd know of them. Or the merchant. I have no need of... Bandit booty. The case of precious stones appears to have been recently stolen. The name Marcel has been etched onto the side. These ten... If there's anything... I'm a little... Pr Something doesn't feel right. I should not... While everything could be a little warmer, I have to draw the line somewhere. There's no... I know, or knew, the man who bore that name. He was a fellow merchant, well-traveled, knowledgeable, a good friend. I am saddened to hear of his fate. How did he come to this? I encountered a disoriented shade. It led me into the wastelands, where I think I unearthed its worldly possessions. Your words convey troubling images, that of an untethered and volatile spirit. You know of such things? I have traveled much, seen as much, and heard of much more. Resolving a spirit's grievance will help it find peace, but do so quickly. Why the rush? Desire stains every soul. More so one which has passed, yet cannot pass on. Left to fester, its pain will feed its malevolence, and forever will it haunt the wastelands. No one shall be safe. Such cruel irony. What do you mean? I conducted business with one only days ago. He came to me with a blue stone. Most impressive. I paid him well for it. Iganor being what it is, I was soon visited by a nobleman from the favored quarter who purchased it immediately. Sir Hamfed. Your chance of possessing it is as a flames in the snow. Perhaps if the elements had chosen you differently. I should seek out this spirit again. If what the merchant says is true, it could be a dangerous presence in Iganor. By your actions do you prove your worth. Here is the incense burner. Thank you. That which is loaned is best returned. I promise to give it back when I'm done. A promise seeks always a companion indeed.
Now that he knows Marcel's fate, I don't think Si Long will trade for his former colleague's ill-gotten goods. I feel like they... I've packed all the tingleberry powder. I'm not going to throw the ins- That doesn't help. I'll need to lure them down where I can reach them. Perhaps with something tasty. I don't think those carnivorous critters will go for that. I can't use that. I can't. I can't. This one sounds fairly straightforward. I doubt they would cause you much bother with their wings aflame. That's the spirit. Discretion is your ally, Dark. No good can come of a rash approach. I find they are less troublesome in the rain That tasted very refreshing. I feel sharper than ever. Ah! Keep your head. Thank you. 
from the Wastelands entrance. Why isn't there a tavern hall in the Mage's Tower? I possess an item I think someone of your talents would find beneficial. If you were to pay me, us, the token sum of 70 gold coins, we might be able to arrange a trade. I don't have enough money. Well, let me know when you do. It's a professional discourtesy to reveal one's sources. Let's just say the previous owner, a mage no less, won't be needing it anymore. Watch your back. It's the most... I possess an eye. It's a profession. I have nothing against you lot, so long as you stay in your towers for the most part and don't bother us giftless folk. That's what you call us, isn't it? Among other things. What? Nothing. About that item you mentioned. I trust you have the money. The price is 70. The price is the price. The price. Here are your seventy gold coins. Thanking you. The item, please. Well, there's a slight catch. I meant to say I used to possess the item. The trader I sold it to perished in the wastelands, and I haven't managed to reacquire it. Finn won't go into the wastelands. He's scared of the hug. Uh, tell me what I need to know. It's simple, really. Seek the emerald brooch, Karen's tear, from the wastelands, and it's yours. I promise you won't regret it. You will recognize the trader by a serpentine armband. There are no wa- The wasps have awoken. They'll need to remain close to the tingleberry smoke. I cannot capture the- There are no... There are... I'm not trying to cook the meat or the wasps. If I... 
I cannot capture these wasps. They're too active. The wasps might not like having... The powder would mask the smell of the meat. The incense burner, turning, turning the knob only extinguishes There are no... The incense The wasps seem to have fallen asleep. I've captured the wasps in a flask. I'll leave it there. Your incense burner. As promised. My humblest thanks. May you receive all the blessings your elements see fit to give. They are your elements, too. That which is mine, I have. So I thank you for sharing yours. I have no reason There's an emerald brooch tucked into a cloth bag. 
There's no- What? How could this have happened? I thank you, mage. Without your help, I could not have avenged the injustice against me. You did this? It was necessary. My slayers are no more. Then... then you are finished here. You can leave. I think not. That which is eternal cannot be sated. This isn't right. You had your revenge. Your bloodlust can end. No. I was taken from life. Nothing can appease this urge, this wrathful appetite. All who enter my Slayer's home will perish. Taking these lives, the sensations, too intoxicating. You cannot stay here. You do not belong in the mortal world. I decide, not those who would rid themselves of me. The wasteland shall be my domain. All who enter shall burn. For your aid, I give you a choice. Do you defy me? Not enough m Do you know why I have summoned you, Dark? You felt the presence of the apparition I encountered? Indeed. The fire grants us a chance to see into the other world. One that lies parallel 
to our own. You are fortunate to have encountered a spirit form. They are often selective as to whom they wish to act through. It is the duty of the Fire Mage to allow this exchange, and you have performed it well. In addition, you have behaved honorably, bringing finality and peace to a tormented soul. The stone it has bestowed upon you is quite remarkable. Show it to me. A fire jewel. They were created eons ago. In all our long history, none have been certain of their origin. While you wear it, the jewel will magnify your power. Use it wisely. I will. Thank you, Master Pyres. You continue to do us proud, Dark. I cannot think of one more worthy of initiation. I have won my fair share of duels with those, and lost a great many more. I do not subscribe to the hypocrisy of some of our brethren. Varner believes mages should know how to defend themselves, and I concur. In any event, what's the harm in a little sport between allies? They host regular competitions in the capital. Did you know that? Keeps the nogs... I beg your pardon. The non-mages most amused. Do your best. I don't... Now that I have removed those bothersome wasps for good, I think the eagles will let me pass. Uh, stay away from me! Leave me be! Drink this. It should ease the pain enough to help you walk. We just have to attend to the wound first. Stay away! I will hurt you, human! Go! Hold still. I need to see your wound. It is my leg, human. I do not need... Ugh. His leg isn't broken. But it's badly burned, and there's a sharp rock fragment embedded in the wound. I'll need to do something. There's no guarantee I wouldn't roast his leg. Now is hardly the time to be showing him things. Now is... A bandage might not be a bad idea, but I must tend to the wound first. What? What are you going to do now? What? Uh, thank you, human.
I've bound his leg as best I can. Come on, up you get. I am dark, by the way. What's your name? Falk, why are you helping me? I could not leave you to suffer. Your human friends thought otherwise. What happened? I was flying over the town. I know I am not meant to, but I like seeing it up close. As I passed over your lord's home, flame engulfed my leg and caught my wing. Flame? From an arrow? It must have been. I made it as far as the pass and landed here. I may never fly again. There is no greater shame for my people. If you permit me, Falk, I will return with you to your valley. I need to speak with your leader. He might be less hostile if you are with me. As you have helped me, that seems only fair. I will call for Chief Hawkane at the entrance. You say the humans targeted you, Falk? The Lord's own guards? I saw only the direction the flame came from, the largest ground perch. Miguel's home, I think. A moment later, it struck my leg and scorched my wing. This is most serious. The worst incident since these troubles began. Sorry to interrupt, Chief Hawkane, but to what troubles do you refer? You will do well to remember that a human's place is second among Flyterians, less when he is trespassing. He helped me, father. Indeed. That is why he still lives. Father? Ask your questions, human, but be quick. You mentioned troubles. Maybe I can help. I think not. Our relations with the humans are strained of late, and this season's envoys have not yet arrived. In addition, we have spied the Lord's own citizens entering the forest, where no human should dare tread. If Miguel is conspiring with the forest folk, as I suspect, and humans have formed such an impure alliance, we would have no choice but to cleanse this land of their tainted blood. More recent and pressing are the thefts committed against our own citizens. Only your kind would possess such frivolous items as those left in our perches. I am not wrong. Humans have entered our city without permission. Coupled with today's unforgivable attack, my options are few. An end to human insolence draws near. Have you searched your city for the missing property? Why would we? The perpetrators are obvious. I would like to see these perches for myself. You suggest we are capable of a ground dweller's dishonesty? That insult alone hardens my resolve. No human shall again pass beyond this. I will allow him, father. What is this? You cannot- Is it not our law that any Flytarian, chief son or no, may grant outsiders passage through our territory? It is so, but know that you would be responsible for this human, Falk. Were he to abuse your trust, your life would be forfeit. I could do nothing to change that. I understand. Very well. You may see these perches, human, once you have shown respect and paid tribute. But remember, should your actions compromise my son, you will suffer by my own talons. Yours would be the first blood in a war that now seems unavoidable. Sperrin, take Falk home. Condure, you shall escort the human around our city. Be vigilant at all times. Welcome to the city of Flyteria. Can you take me to Falk's perch? All right. Hold on.
Hello again. I didn't thank you properly before. Please know I am grateful for your aid. I'm glad I could help. Tell me, is there any way to see your father? As an outsider, you will not be able to visit my father's perch without an offering of some kind. Humans are known for their tools and crafts, at least the ones you are permitted to use. Perhaps you could make something for him. I tried to make one for my father, but I am unfamiliar with the strange object in the center. You mean the wheel? Wheel? Never mind. Do you mind if I take this block of wood? Go ahead. I wasn't sure how to finish it anyway. When you asked my father whether he had searched for the stolen property, I wondered how humans could get around unseen, unless they were mages. You are a mage, yes? Nearly. I've heard about your kind. You are not like other humans. Could a mage have stolen those things? It is true that some can move about unseen, but those same mages could not ascend your perches unnoticed. For letting you into our valley? It was the least I could do. If you can prove that humans are not responsible for these thefts, maybe my father will change his mind about them. You do not owe me anything, except perhaps to learn what really happened to the missing items. Drop by again soon. Can you... This scrap looks like it came from a poster of some kind. Did a human really commit the thefts? I should find out where this came from. Can you take me back to the village overlook? My fall. I'm sure Falk will not mind. This wheel looks broken. May I have it? You wouldn't take a girl's wheel without compensation, right? What did you have in mind? Make me an offer. I don't have enough. What happened to your poster? Vandalism! Cyrus Tabin and I were discussing the incoming trade tariffs. The next thing I know, someone had come along and torn it. There's no respect for anything anymore. I blame Megail. For a ripped poster? Why not? That reminds me. I found the strangest thing. Whoever defaced the poster dropped some sort of grooming item. Only it wasn't like anything I've ever seen. It had the handle of a comb, but in place of the teeth, it was curved like a beak. Might be useful if you had feathers, I suppose. Do you still have this feather comb? I do, but... Go on. I hate to ask, but times are tough. What with our lord raising the taxes for the fourth time this year, I was going to sell it to Si Long. Are you sure there's nothing I could do to change your mind? Well... I was deeply saddened when I saw what someone had done to the likeness of my valued customer. I mean, this good person. If you could find a way to repair the poster with the missing pieces, that would be a service beyond measure. Seven gold coins shall be your recompense.
not the You'll need to be You'll need You'll need to You'll need You'll need That seems a fair trade. I can't attach them directly. This may require the help of a skilled metal worker. Good blacksmith, might you attach this wooden wheel and metal pole so that the wheel spins freely at one end? Mm -hmm. Is that enough? <clears throat> Is that enough? <clears throat> Thank you, blacksmith. The feathers are not adhesive. The feathers are sticky now. That's a fine gift. Are those my feathers? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Do not be. My father will want to know you had my blessing to use them. Hold it still while I scratch my mark into the wood. There. My father should approve now. You may enter and present your gift. An insightful gift. My son listens well to his father's tales. What do you call this? A windmill. Windmill. <sighs> Falk is as I was in my youth. Too much so, I think. But the past is dead, as are those who were taken from us. Only the future matters. My people will survive in spite of human and forest folk treachery. As you can see, the evidence held to the light casts the darkest shadow over our human neighbors. Go ahead. Observe the items if you must. You will reach the same conclusion. Humans have been among us, uninvited, bringing nothing but ill intent. Two items of value only to humans were discovered in separate perches. Nearby was evidence of further transgression. Two items of value only to humans were discovered in separate perches. What does it matter what was stolen? That these thefts happened at all is the most pertinent fact. If you must know, they were grooming implements, adornments, small things of that nature. The thefts occurred in separate locations. Condor can take you to those perches. A leather gauntlet with brass buckles and silver studs made for a smallish hand. The owner was evidently a smoker, and I don't think the Flytarians have taken up such vices yet. The mouthpiece is made of brass.
Can you take me to the perch where the smoking pipe was found? Can you take me to the perch? The Flytarians are not vegetarians. These scraps of fruit must have come from produce outside of the valley. No reason to confiscate any of these items. Fruit scraps in the Flytarian village? From my stall, you say? Yes, they were spread across the floor at the scene of a theft. I am short a few apples and a banana, but I'd wager it was those children who like playing nearby. They're certainly fast. May I take a closer look? They went missing from the crate behind me. The fruit scraps in the Flytarian perch likely came from here. Might this brass button have come from the Flytarian village somehow? I should ask around. Wasteland burrower's teeth are said to contain a protein that increases crop yield when ground into a fine powder and used as fertilizer. If you make some for me, your purse will be all the heavier for your effort. I found this on the ground nearby. Did you notice who dropped it? No, I'm afraid not. I found this on the ground nearby. Did you notice who dropped it? Let me see that. Ah, that's the insignia of Ignor. Anyone enacting official duty on behalf of Lord Magyle wears a uniform adorned with identical buttons. Do such important people grace your stall with their presence? Every day. Why do you ask? I'm investigating a theft. I had no idea mages concerned themselves with the trivialities of us lesser folk. They don't. These thefts occurred in the Flytarian village, possibly by lesser folk, as you say. Do you know who might have dropped this particular button? Oh, well, <laughs> nobody comes to mind, I'm sorry to say. Then again, I've never paid close attention to those of the favored quarter. No sense feeding one's envy. If there's a connection between the displaced fruit and button, I may find it in the Flytarian Valley. Strange. I've seen something like that in my cousin's perch. Pekon found it there two days ago. We thought it might be a coin of some sort from your town. You didn't mention this to your father? It did not seem important. I mean, nothing was stolen. I should take a look anyway. 
Can you direct me to your cousin's perch? Of course. It is on the western side of the valley. Pekon is visiting the Sharpstone Mountains today, but I can permit you entry. Ask Condor. He knows the way. Can you take me to Pekon's perch? These breadcrumbs may have come from the market quarter, just as the fruit scraps did. Thank you. It's heartening to find that there are still decent folk left in the world. I think that's worth more than coin. I've no idea how valuable this feather comb is. Still, it's yours if you want it. Where did you find that? In Igonor's market quarter. That's more than a little odd. I recognize the markings on the handle. They belong to the widow Parla, but she's been sequestered in mourning for the past month. I imagine you still wish to visit her perch, though. You imagine correctly. Condur can fly you there. Can you take me to the perch of the Widow Parla? Where are you, my darling? I wait for you. There you are. What have you brought for me today? Oh, thank you. I know you love me. But you must stop bringing me these trinkets. Where do you get them from? It is not safe, my darling, especially not now. I would never tell anyone it was you. It will always be our secret. We are good at keeping secrets, are we not? No one will ever know who you really are. Follow that magpie! The magpie flew to an outcropping in the mountains. The smell of the area prevented me from investigating further. I can take you there, if you like. Can you take me to the outcropping? According to Condor, the stench from within the cave is too strong for him. Funny, I can't smell anything. It's so dark here, even my flare spell doesn't help. I have dried the lantern's wick. The wick is dry, but my spells won't ignite it. 
I'll need to think of something else. My candle is now burning. Can you? The missing envoys, I presume. The burns suggest they were killed by flame projectiles, like the one that struck Falk. Lord Megail's guards may have been ordered to assassinate them. But for what purpose? Furthermore, why leave them here? And how did the perpetrator move them up here without being noticed? There is another more disturbing possibility, which I had better keep to myself for now. Disturb us, child of flame. Souls of those slain in the coldest of blood. Now let go. I meant no disrespect, spirits. If you could help me to understand what has transpired. What is done is done. Embrace us. As we have embraced an honorless death. I can help you. I can find out who... It is too late. We are of the dark. As soon you shall be. I'm not I can't... Can you take...
There's no... This envoy wears a single gauntlet matching the one I saw in Hawking's perch. What is this? A conductor? It's like mine, only it has a stylized symbol on it. Two half circles slid apart along a dividing line. The dead envoy's clothing is ripped to shreds. Two missing brass buttons have been torn from his doublet. I have found out all I can. I need to see Hawking. You have shown perseverance in your search for the truth. Most surprising for a human. You have also brought proof that these thefts were but the acts of a mere magpie and its misguided caretaker. Guard, bring her in. You summoned me, noble Hawkane. Your magpie is responsible for the recent plight surrounding our missing property. Failure to disclose this almost edged us into war. My darling is innocent. I know him better than you know your own son! Claw carefully, Parla. While every soul of flight may expect our care, your pet is just that, and no more than a scavenger. You will not speak about my husband that way! Your husband, Parla. Your husband is dead, like my wife. While we both feel their loss still, there is no returning from the higher world. But he has come back to me. I knew it the day he died, when I first saw my beloved in his new form. <sighs> we have heard enough. Guard, return her to her perch, and keep watch lest her pet return to cause more mischief. Do not hurt my darling. He must not be kept from me. It appears you were right, and that my son's trust was well placed. Falk grows quickly, something I have overlooked in seasons past. He has coped with the dishonor dealt him better than I could have expected. He will succeed you admirably when his day comes. No small impairment can change that. I will tell him you said so. Perhaps I have been too hasty to judge the humans we have protected so long. 
The discovery of the invoice changes everything. Their disappearance was clearly not my people's doing, though some in Iganor may believe otherwise. Yet I do not comprehend why humans would kill their own in such a manner. I don't believe the assault on Falk was motivated by mislaid revenge, yet I am sure it is related somehow to the envoy's demise. A lot of trouble has been taken to break your long-held alliance. It almost succeeded. The nature of their deaths also disturbs me. For reasons with your forgiveness, I do not wish to discuss. I promise you, Chief Hawkane, to find out all I can as soon as my remaining tasks are completed. Once initiated, I will have greater authority to investigate on your behalf. I would be grateful for that. Is there anything I can do to expedite proceeding? Yes. My master sent me to collect a single griffin's egg. Can you help me? Hmm. I can tell you where to find the griffins. They nest in the mountains west of here, and are difficult creatures to approach, let alone take something from. Avoid detection when approaching the nests. Conceal yourself whenever possible. If you should be seen, you can expect an aggressive response. Act as some of our lesser kindred. Duck. Also, know that harming them or their unhatched young would do great dishonor to my people. If you are ready, my guard will take you to the Griffin's nests. Farewell. Goodbye, Chief Hawkane, and thank you. One last thing, human. These eyes see more than your kind could ever hope to behold, and see more still when they look upon yours. Hunger is a trait common upon many, for what one wants and cannot have. Be wary of such desires. As we say, to prey upon more than a talon's share is to lose sight of one's horizon. Thank you, Chief Hawkane. Can you take me to the Griffin nesting grounds? Meet me on the Western Plateau once you have the egg. You have succeeded a second time, Initiate Dark. It is evident that your mentor's faith was not misplaced. Your compassion and diplomacy will hold you in good stead with the Flytarians for many years to come. The Griffin's egg, as precious and sacred as that which mothered it, 
will be returned to its keepers at the conclusion of your trial. Care for it well. It is time to look to the forest where your most difficult and dangerous task lies waiting. Let your element guide you. I came like you asked, Pug. What is this all about? I, uh, wanted to introduce you. This is... Names are not important at this time. Please, sir, sit. Have a drink. What is this, then? Wanna know how real men have a good time? Ah! The ale's boiling! Oh, so it is. Let me pour you another. A good time, you say? I would think you've more pressing priorities. Such a regrettable history deserves recompense. Do you not think? What do you know about me? Only what your friend Pug here has said. Pug? He wants to help. Yeah? How? You are an opportunistic man, Fen. One who has lost much to the likes of Ignor's Lord. As you seek in vain to recover a life taken from you, a gambler in you senses his chance. Change rises like smoke from a smoldering ruin. Tell me, how much would you risk for a change, say, of occupancy in the Lord's Mansion? Ha! Talk is fine, but it makes no difference. The King chooses his Lords. Such choices can be reneged, especially when said Lords become unpopular. Have you not heard of the rumors? About Maguile making friends with those forest cretins? Sounds like something he'd do. Risk its people's lives by letting those things in town, just to get hold of whatever they've got stashed away. Greed is among your kind's greatest traits. And I hear he's planning to sever ties with the mountain folk, who will protect us then. Not you mages, that's for sure. Ah, but like yourself, I have a greater interest. Revolution. What's in it for you? Let us say... Personal satisfaction. Accept this as a show of good faith. We have a deal in the interest of change. That's a lot of change. Sure, why not? It's getting late, and I still need to collect that trinicorn horn from the forest and return to the tower before sunrise. Time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge. Dark, I hear you have completed the second of your trials. Congratulations. Thank you. Seeker of Power. Master your element. Use your gifts in the hall most sparse. Reveal the scroll. There's another scroll inside the box. 
Apparently, this hall has a function after all. Receive your power. Ready for some one-to-one? -one? A challenger for dark! Clear the hall! Pyremine can be very effective for catching enemies off guard. I will summon a decoy corpse for you to cast it on. Well done. Now, Matt, if you would approach the pyre to show its effects. I hate third-degree burns. As you just saw, the corpse becomes a proximity mine that explodes when unsuspecting enemies walk too close. Mortuai's Serpent is one of my favorites. A snake of magical flame erupts from your fingertips, striking foes with the combined power of poison and fire. Let your opponent face the dragon. Spectacular! I do so enjoy seeing that one in action. Now that we have covered everything, would you like a one-on-one -on -one practice session? Very well. I am beginning to wonder if the Masters thought these tasks through. But who am I to question? I saw one, many years ago. It came right up to the forest's edge and allowed me to approach. I reached out my hand and was about to pet it, when guards from the town came rushing up, frightening it away. The fools. You should be on your highest guard there. What the goblins lack in stature, they more than make up for with bloodlust. That's the spirit. Made it through the second round? I'll have to change my bets. What? I'm joking, Dark. Of course you are. The Ancient Arts of Arson. Hmm, there's a note sticking out. It doesn't appear to have come from the book. Better leave it where I found it. I am glad you have returned safely from the mountains. Jonas assured me you would be all right among the Flytarians. 
but I was worried all the same. I am fine, Shireen. Honest. Just be doubly cautious in the forest. You never know who or what you'll find. I am fully stocked and have no quest for you, young initiate. I has nothing that needs doing. I don't need to take I noticed your poster about the Biclops weapon. Mm -hmm. Not enough ma- There's no- I see no There's no There's no Oh! 
Not enough me not enough me The merchant won't ex- Not enough. Not enough. Not. Not. A not a. Not. 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 Not enough. There's no... Help me! My legs! If I can't get away, the grumps will get me! Grumps? Or... Or... something. Help! Hey! Come back here with that egg! I need that! Seeker of power, your deeds have proven you worthy. All knowledge contained within this sphere is now yours. You will become the... Just get on with it! Receive your power. I am... I... am... You were Shoot! the mightiest of mages. But why not use a trinicorn? Their blood is much richer for cap dying. Because you fool, we slaughtered the last of them yesterday. Besides, I need human blood to commune with the lower world. There are only so many peasants Megayo can send me before the townspeople start asking questions. What happens if the... you-know-who agreed? <laughs> 
Then, you skull rot, everything we've been promised will be ours. What about a promise to the fat human? The town's lord? We can go back on that later. Remember to bring out the human when I'm ready. I need time to properly attune myself. That sounds difficult. For you, thinking past the next meal is difficult. Now don't let me down. Yes, boss. All things considered, this might have been a lucky turn. If a trinicorn wandered too close to the camp, there's a good chance I'll find its horn somewhere around here. Better take a look. I should also try to find my belongings while I'm at it. I already know the language of demons. It's no use. The lock is constructed from a high-grade metal, resistant to the effects of extreme temperatures. It's not melting. The lock is forged with heat-resistant metal. That should stop the creaking. There! That's taking care of the lock. So much for needing a key. This looks like the master key. That should There! This looks like the master- I won't have much time before the Redcaps notice I've escaped. I need to get closer. Here are my belongings. The cabinet houses a small ruby brooch. It reminds me of the one that Cray saw. Thank you. 
I should not cast magic. This moist compost won't catch a light by itself. I'll need to make it more flammable. Okay, I've sprinkled the mound with burning powder. Looks like a rotting carcass has been covered by a mound of compost. This moist compost... One more coating should do the trick. Here lies the last of the trinicorns. Its horn is intact. Sharp! Times three. Now I just need to get back to the hallowed hall by sunrise. Sounds like I'm being missed. Time to get out of here. Here goes nothing! Even now, the forest goblins remain unchecked. And why? Because our lord knows fear will make you pay every last coin for his protection. I say, we remove that miser from his manor and replace him with someone who cares for the people of this town. But you said you only cared about... Shut up, Pug. I know I have not lived amongst you long, but I see the pain in your eyes, the hardships you endure. I know them well. It's true I've strayed, more than any of you could imagine, never knowing a home or purpose. But here, in Iganor, I have found both. Maguile, who takes all and gives back naught, cares nothing for you, but I do. What about your new friend? He's a mage! They don't help us. Is that the help you're looking for? Who's had enough of this so-called lord, putting his own pockets before the welfare of your loved ones? Yeah! Who thinks Iganor deserves a new lord? Yeah! Who will help me become that lord? I think it's fair to say I'm lost.
Not again. We apologize for dragging you here, literally. But we couldn't be sure of your intentions. What you've told us confirms our suspicions. The Red Caps are planning to abandon the forest and live in the town as humans. Good riddance, you might say. But that will not be the end of it. Mark my words. They will return with their human slaves to wipe us out. Or worse, make us wear their red caps again. <coughs> we will not let them. He will help us. <coughs> Child, you will return to the red cap camp and stop Stroth from raising the lower world inhabitants. Me? Why? Two reasons. One, we're holding this nice egg and horn until you return. Two, it would be bad for everyone, human or goblin, if that dolt manages to summon anything from down there. And three, I wasn't going to mention the wars, but it's about time the mages made up for what happened to us. So, if you are planning to leave this forest with your possessions, want a town to go back to, and care about righting more than a few wrongs, you will do exactly what we say. Anything else? No, that was all. Then listen up. None of us can go, as we would be recognized, so we will send you back disguised as a goblin. A little trick we picked up from a mage who wandered into our camp a few years ago. He wanted a green cap for an initiation or some such. Luckily for him, we only dip ours in leaf juice. Take this and drink up. You look better already. Now listen, you won't be able to cast your human spells in goblin form. Besides, you'd just look silly. We'd also appreciate it if you could bring Stroff back with you. He has some serious re-education awaiting him. Well, off you go then. Um, one thing. How am I supposed to stop Stroff from raising anything from the lower world? How humans have managed to get this far, I will never know. Improvise, of course. Getting hold of Stroff's summoning book would help, too. See you, if you get back. You mean, when? Sure I do. Goodbye. Wait, I do not know you. You must be the new chef. What's your name? Uh, Slugbore Treaclewood the Third. Good. We were wondering when you were going to arrive. Stroth has been waiting for his new chef forever. So, can I see your leader? He's busy getting ready to uh, uh commune with our friends. You know the ones down there. I thought you needed human blood for that. Hey, you are smart. Our last supply got away, but we found some more wandering about near here. Must have been lost. If you wait a little while, you might get to see them. Have you seen them before? Yeah, I try not to look though. Stroth is braver than I am. He wants them to stay above ground with us. Do they want to stay above ground? Not sure. Stroth says they'll come up for good if they can trust us. So, we're not allowed to make any commotion. But you don't have much time. Stroth wants a recipe made. It's for the summoning after party. I was supposed to prepare it, but, um... What? I can't read good. I'll see what I can do. Go to the cooking hut. You should find everything you need.
Okay, time to prepare a red cap dish. How hard could it be? There, one awful smelling meal, unfit for human consumption. Hopefully I've earned my goblin stripes now. You idiot! I told you not to skimp on the candles! I couldn't find any more! I don't want excuses! Either find two more candles for the pentagram, or I'll stick wicks in your thumbs instead! I have... What's the problem? I've looked everywhere in a camp! There aren't any more spare candles! Drop will have my thumbs! Can you find me some? Where should I look? Find a human town! If you're quick, they won't see you. And if they do? Then Straff won't get his candles. We can't have that. When you have them, place them on that pointy thing. I have... I'd better return to the Red Cap camp with these. I am ready. Have all the Red Caps assembled. Okay, boy. Hear me, O oh mighty ones of the lower world. Enter this horrid glaring realm of humans and spread your darkness across their land. We wait for you, O oh magnificent shades of the lower world. Join us, so together we may conquer, pillage, and so forth.
If this is a bad time, O oh fearsome denizens of the lower world, then show us a sign, and we will call upon you again tomorrow. Maybe they're not in. Shut up! I'm trying to... How many times do we have to tell you we are not interested? Sounds like my inherent speech ability still works. Oh, great demon! We want only for you to rise and join forces with us, so we may claim dominance over the human world. Humans are tedious. What reason have we to conquer them? I feel strange. I think the tonic is wearing off. A chance to forge a new world together. With the humans suppressed, we will remake their realm into a goblin paradise. Time to make myself scarce. That was lucky. I need to stop the ritual. If I could just get Stroff to drop that summoning book. I see you, mage. You will burn. All of you. There's no loot. Whatever his pockets hold is of no interest. I knew I should have locked the door. It's over, Stroff. Yes, yes, you won. I get it. What do you want? You will accompany me back to the Green Cap Camp. They put you up to this? I might have known. This has their sticky, stinking leaf juice all over it. Will you come? Or do I have to make you? Ugh, fine. After you. So good to have you back with us, Stroff. <laughs> You have our gratitude for bringing him to us. With the summoning book out of Stroff's greedy hands, hey. he will be unable to raise anything anytime soon. Good job. Yeah, brilliant. Looks like a page is missing. Don't look at me. The book was already falling apart when I got it. Which raises a valid point. Why would a human like Miguel send Stroff a book on how to summon demons? Where would he even get something like that? Well, Stroff? How would I know? I didn't ask. Besides, I only dealt with his messenger. And you simply trusted this human? We had a deal. He'd give me the book, and in exchange, I'd let him command a few demons. Command? The Giftless couldn't hope to control a demon. They can't even speak their language. Stroff, this messenger, what did he look like? As if I'd notice. You humans all smell the same. Stroff. Fine. <sighs> Tall, thin, beard, wore a gold mask and hood. 
Had one of those brass knuckle protectors like this kid does. Oh no. What is it? I may know who gave Stroff the summoning book, but I am hoping my intuition is misplaced. If you have no objection, I would like to keep the tome. It may prove useful. Very well. Brave human, you may have your belongings back. And the summoning book. Oh, and take these potions. Your magical friend left them behind. We prefer our own natural tonics. Yours give us a rash. As an extra token of our thanks, allow me to present you with this ancient mystical emerald. Apparently you mages go nuts for these things. Thank you. Don't mention it. We've got a whole box of them we're trying to get rid of. When you are ready, you have but to exit our camp, and you shall find yourself in a familiar part of the forest. Tell me, what will become of Stroth? He will be treated well, I assure you. We have great plans for his re-education. He'd appreciate my input as much as he would appreciate my species. The dial won't turn. The hallowed hall must be closed until morning. Good thing I have until dawn. Well, at least I can find out where this summoning book came from. Ah, hello, Dart. Finished your three tasks? Yes. I am ready to be initiated. The masters and all the other mages have retired for the night. Looks like your ceremony will have to wait till tomorrow morning. Oh. Why are you still awake? You know me, nocturnal tendencies. Besides, there are less distractions at night. It means I can get more reading done. I should have known. I need to know if this book came from the reading hall. Summoning, yes, I know it. There's only one way to take a book from here, and that's to borrow it. A protection spell of my own design. Not that you would know about the lending rules. You read enough for both of us. Can you tell me who borrowed it? I will have to look it up. Got it. How do you do that? I attune myself to the record store in the archive hall. It's like having a massive index inside your head. Care to try? Uh, no thank you. So, who borrowed it? It was Varner. Why, is it important? Do you know where he is? It is getting late, but he might still be in the training hall. If you're lucky. He isn't here. I can't wait until tomorrow. I need to speak to Varner tonight. Hear him explain how this is all a misunderstanding. I'm going to need help locating him. I just have to convince Bort. Bort, it is vital that I see Varner. Tonight. May I ask what this is about? Uh, I, I don't... It's difficult to... Dark, what's the matter? It's only circumstantial, I know, but... Go on. I believe Varner may be responsible for assaulting a Flytarian, two near attacks on Ignor, and at least three giftless deaths. What? Are you sure? Elements guide us. Your... your reluctance to accept this is understandable. I mean, Varner? I know. But I can't ignore the signs when they all point in the same direction. I have to see him, hear the truth in his own words. Can you help me? Well, I would lend you my finer amulet, but if you recall, it doesn't work. I'd need a special emerald from... 
I might be able to help with that. Here. That's fantastic! Only one problem. The emerald will need to be fitted properly, and it's fiddly work to say the least. How long? Not sure. I'll have to check the installation instructions, dig up the tools from my private hall, and then research the right words to activate it. I can't wait around for Bort to fix it. There has to be another way to locate Varner. Is there any way to find out the combination to a private hall? Only if the person assigned to it tells you. There are very strict rules about... Bort? <sighs> if you're asking me whether I know Varner's combination, I don't. What I do know is that most mages choose their own private hall combinations, so it's a question of knowing Varner well enough to... Guess? That's not helpful, Bort. Maybe not. Ah, but this might be. Check the bookshelves. What for? The title Varner borrowed four days ago. How is that supposed to... Wait, isn't that when all the combinations were changed? It was. I know it's a stretch, but I distinctly recall Varner paying close attention to the spine. This is the book Varner borrowed. It's filled with sonnets and short poems. I can't see anything meaningful written in these pages. I hope there's something in here that will disprove my theory. Where are you, Varner? What's this? A diary? Did Varner drop it? Varner must have written this a long time ago. This part of the journal consists of many similar entries. I'll skip ahead a bit. Elements guide us. The journal's covered in blood. I'll leave it here. I have no wish to become a member of Varner's little club. One of the witnesses is Phileum, Varner's rival candidate to become the next Firemaster. That can't be a coincidence. Or can it? I'm loath to dismiss any lead, but I'm running out of time. All I know is that it's late, and Varner isn't here. Given what I've learned, it seems likely he's up to something outside the tower. I need to get out of his private hall and find a way of locating him. From this elevation, I can see a large number of people amassing in the favored quarter. I'd better take a closer look. I see something. A crowd. 
assembled at the gates of Lord Megail's manor. And what's this? Fend is standing in front of them giving a speech. There's a hooded figure nearby, Varner. This tower has no alarm system like some of the newer ones. There's no time to work out the combination to every hall. I must stop whatever is transpiring alone. It is time, my fellow citizens, to end the rule of this treacherous and misguided fiend who calls himself our Lord. Lord MacGyle. Yes, Pug, they know that. Can I count on you, friends, to help me this night? <laughs> then let us begin. The lock, mage, if you please. Follow me! And me! I have to get to Lord Megail before... Well, well, of all the mages I consider a potential problem, you never made the list. Varner, you have to stop this. Varner? I suppose the ruse was effective. Who are you? Pyres? I don't... Understand? Let me help you. Imagine being born so immeasurably gifted that you incinerate your entire family at the age of four. Now imagine how that felt. All that power, that purpose. Then to grow up revered, even feared, with the greatest expectations placed upon you, only to fall short of them all, peaking as master of this insignificant province. And finally, to realize that no one, not a soul, will remember that boy, that child who tasted power beyond reckoning, who knew his name should last. This world is meant to burn, and I was meant to burn it. You of all mages should appreciate that. Varner would comprehend, were he conscious. What have you done with him? Where is he? Where he can do the most damage as his element intended. I consider it his penance for interfering. Varner knew? Yes, though our confrontation was too rushed to learn how. Now come, I sense you wish to waste time asking me pointless questions. To ignite chaos, light as many fires as you can. It matters not how the torch touches Ignore so long as it burns brightly enough for all to see. The glow will illuminate my name. While the townsfolk have passion, the guards are skilled. Hence my presence here. You may have noticed that our Lord is not Ignor's most popular. This uprising was inevitable. I merely helped it along. His ambition is matched only by his arrogance. You can talk. I have no interest in power for its own sake, nor in satisfying a misplaced grudge. A companion of questionable value. He provides neither the brawn nor the brain. It will take Bort years to learn how I circumvented his protection spell. As for the Redcaps, Stroff was as grateful as any goblin can be. It still astounds me how a few coins will assuage a fool's fear enough 
to wander to his death. Enough prattle. I read your diary. Then you comprehend. This is my purpose, my destiny. I will live on for all time. You cannot be our fire master forever. Of course not, but I can be the last. They always remember the last. Pyres, the master who stood at the fall of Iganor. We both know this insurrection is doomed. When the king's army arrives, the dissidents will be quashed and our tower disbanded. Varna was to be blamed, but he has a greater purpose now. Curse you, Pyres! Where is Varner? Temper? I've got a better question. Do you have time to search for him and save your precious lord? Better still, will you live to do either? Bort! I got my finder amulet working. After you left, I asked it to show me Varner, and it led me into town. Then I heard the commotion and came here. Quickly, take it. If he's in danger, there's not much time. Find Varner. Remember, the faster it flashes, the nearer you are. Watch out! Not bad for a bookworm. Now go! The amulet is pulsating slowly here. I had better find Varner. Who knows how long Bort can hold out? As for Lord Maguile... The amulet is at its brightest here. Varner must be close. It's not locked. That's a first. Firebomb on a sustained timer. It's a big one, too. From the pulsation rate and glare intensity, I would say it has about 20 seconds before it. Uh oh. Dark. What is going on? Our fire master has gone mad and has set the townspeople against their lord. Now Bord is fighting him and- Pyres. Yes, I remember now. How did you find out? Jonas. He saw the Flytarian heir being shot down with fire and managed to tell me before he got sidetracked. After several hours searching the records hall for absentees with no success, I noticed one of the entries had been altered. Difficult to spot, and only a master could make such a change. I arranged to meet Pyres. Our fire master tried to assure me that it was an error, but he could tell I was skeptical. You can guess what happened next. I must go to the Earth Mage's aid. Do what you can to stop the mob. The situation must be contained. What is it? I thought it was you. That all of this was your fault. You had good reason. And it is what you were meant to think. I should have seen through it. You have always been my mentor. My friend. Do not blame yourself. The fire can blind as easily as it can light your path. Quickly now. We must hurry.
Hey, you! You're needed at the front gate! Uh, there's some riffraff causing trouble! Get a move on! my hands. Good thing I like it. I don't want to melt this lock. I need a way to get to Megayle directly. I can't reach What are you doing here? My name is Dark, my lord, and I am here to- You're a mage! I didn't send for your motley lot. No, my lord, but I thought you would appreciate the help, seeing as there are a large number of your people downstairs who would like to have you thrown out. Literally. If you are referring to that rabble below, I assure you I am quite safe. My guards trained with the king's army. They are no strangers to quelling pithy insurrections. My lord, do you have any idea why they are coming for you? How the devil would I know? The peasantry are so fickle, one cannot keep track of every minuscule complaint. The price of beans one day, taxes the next, ale shortages, though I might sympathize with that one, Thieves, disease, the weather. They think you have turned against the Flytarians and are in league with the Red Cap Goblins. Why in the lower world would they think that? Well, um, because the Firemaster has been spreading rumors to that effect. What of yours? What for? It's complicated. Then I suggest you go out there and uncomplicate things. But surely you should... Go on! You came here to save me from a mess your lot started, so get on with it. At least lock the door. I will, but just to keep you from coming back in. That is a difficult man to care about. The guards are barring the mob at the main doors downstairs. Trained or not, even they cannot hold those numbers for long. There's MacGyle's room, Finn, at the top of the stairs! Yes, I can see that, pug. Citizens of Iganor! You have to stop this madness! This is no business of yours, mage! Step aside! Lord Maguile is innocent of your accusations! You lie! All you have are rumors, fed to you by the Fire Master! And all you have is your word! I have been to the Flytarian City! They remain your allies and protectors! I have also been deep inside the forest! Its folk will not bother you any time soon! Why should we believe you? Show us proof that you've been there! This is the Horn of a Trinicorn, which the Red Cap Goblins have hunted to extinction. That I stand before you with this is proof that they are in no position to attack you. That only proves you're in one of those places. Which still leaves one more. Yes, Pug, he knows that. This is a griffin's egg. I would not have been able to obtain one without the Flytarian's permission. It is a sign of their friendship. This is a trick. He is conspiring with the Lord and his cohorts. Press on, my friends. He is only a boy. Do not let his puny spells stop you. Ah! 
Time for plan B, Bolt. That could have gone better. I hope Miguel's door holds out. Mine too, for that matter. I can't use combative magic. I'll have to think of something else, quickly. The chair has wedged under the handle. Nobody will be entering through the door, but I won't be leaving that way either. It's jammed, Fen. Forget about him. It's Maguile we're after. Get over here. That flimsy lock on the door to Maguile's bedchambers won't last long. Why have you returned? They are trying to break in. We need to block these doors from the inside. You do, you mean? That should do it. Just how am I supposed to sleep with that incessant pounding? Go and make it stop immediately. Expel that rabble from my house. I can't get back into the main hall. Here is the key to the ground floor. Well, don't just stand there. Come and take it. Now, for goodness sake, go. With the mob gone, this might be my best chance to deal with Fend and Pug. You said you could take care of the door yourself, Pug. You said that, but there's something heavy in the way. It's probably Miguel. For once in your life, be useful. Why did you have to send the mob away to ransack the Lord's office in town? They could have helped. Because this is my moment. When I toss that ponce out on his ear, I don't want a bunch of rowdy imbeciles spoiling it. Or making off with your future property. Shut up, Pug, and put your back into it. Hey, Pug, catch. I thought I smelled something. You seem to have lost your friend, Fend. I have lost more than you could ever know, boy. Keep it down out there. I'm trying to sleep. Tell me, do they teach you about pain in that tower of yours? About death? You think that's funny? I'll ask you again. Tell me, do they teach you about pain in that Whatever troubled past you've had, it doesn't justify this. Quiet! I've already asked you once. Have you watched your entire family fall to sickness while those with the power to help do nothing? Have you grown up alone, hungry, while the likes of Maguile enjoy their third helping? Have you gone a day in your life wanting for anything? They took me when I was six. You're really testing my patience. No apologies, no explanations, except to tell my family I was special, that I needed to be with my own kind. I would be treated well, better than if I had stayed, but I would not be allowed to see them again until I was initiated. That was 10 years ago. 
I don't even know if they're still alive. And what? You think this makes us the same? I do know about pain. And uncertainty. And wanting what you can't have. I'm warning you! Don't make me come out there! I'm supposed to believe any of that. It's up to you, Fend. Just don't tell me you're the only one who deserves his share. Or more. If you're not careful, you'll get... More than you bargained for. I thought I told you to... Who the devil is that? That's the man who would be Lord. Lord? And what of the mob? Ransacking your town office, I believe. I'll have it sorted soon. You do that, and clear that heaving lump off my balcony. Maybe now I can get some sleep. You've dealt with our revolutionaries, I see. Well done. A bunch of humans? Easy. Pyres? Poor to die. Ugh! Do continue, Varna. No? Then allow me. Both of your friends managed to lose me in the heat of battle. When the fools split up, I made my move. Now what? You'll kill all three of us? I don't see why not. You would murder a boy, Pyres. Have you no compassion? My dear Varna, always the idealist. I'm more of a practical man. In any case, my nature was decided long ago. You didn't mean for your family to die. It was an accident. You were only a child. The elements wish it. They wish for you to go on killing? They wish for me to survive, if only in name. No one will remember you, Pyres. You're just a common madman. History will swallow you whole. Fool! Speak for yourself. Not enough. Not... Ah, you won't kill me. I've sensed the hunger within you. You've dreamed of greatness, as have I. Of power exceeding even that of the High Masters. It can be yours. I can help you attain it. You can be everything you desire. You are right. I have craved more power than I could ever hope to wield. Dark, no. Then you accept. But I have seen what such desires do to others. The priestess, whose lust for dominance did not abate over five centuries. Stroph, who saw himself equal to a demon lord. Fend, blind to the futility of his ambition. And then there's you. No. I will have what the elements see fit to grant me. Nothing more. Then you are just another fool. I can live with that. Are you okay? Uh, I've been better. What happens now? I think Pyres has an appointment with the dungeon hall. We have a dungeon hall? <laughs> we will. Soon. 
If either of you are wondering, I'm fine. Take your time. The morning came, and with it, many changes. Through our tower, the High Masters of Dominatra were apprised of the previous night's events. The King would reassess Lord Megyle's posting in Iganor. Measures would be taken to ensure nothing like the threat Pyres posed would happen again. As for the former Master, he would spend his remaining days in our dungeon hall. For myself, I had saved both Bort and Varner. Blessed with their gratitude, I eagerly awaited my impending initiation. Initiate Dark, you have successfully completed your tasks using your considerable intelligence and skills. You have shown great competence in your abilities. More importantly, you employed them to protect the township from the Fire Master's vile machinations. The Priestess, though a known risk to our initiates, was an apt choice against which to test their abilities. Much knowledge was lost in her death, and her absence may result in more difficult trials for future initiates. On behalf of my people, not least my son, accept our congratulations and thanks. Your name will be spoken in our realm with honor and reverence for many years to come. Your handling of the goblin situation prevented a serious breach of the natural law. Thanks to you, the inhabitants of the lower world shall remain where they belong, in the beliefs and tales of the human mind. If I may be allowed to speak, this initiate has performed above and beyond any who have come before him. His actions saved my life, enabled Pyres' defeat, and protected Iganor from a political firestorm. As the new Firemaster, I extend my endless thanks to him. So noted. Come, Initiate Dark. Kneel before us. We all have a beginning. A moment that defines us shapes us into something new. For some, that moment is painless, unnoticed. For others, it is a sharper turn, one that comes at a cost, a loss. Change is inevitable. I know my beginning. I know where it has taken me. The future becomes history. Some remembered, most not. As I go forward, two things are certain. I am dark. I am a mage.
What took you so long? 